The Boston Bruins are set to face off against the Montreal Canadiens in tonight's game, and this game will dictate how this season goes for the Boston Bruins. There's many implications that this game will have, and a few updates that the Bruins have given will unlock this team if things get done. We're going to be talking about all of this news that came out today, how and why this move will unlock this team in this video. Before we get into it, however, we know since 70% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you're looking for a spot to get all of your Boston Bruins news, you're in the right spot. Hit the sub button. Join me here on the channel as we cover everything Boston Bruins related. Now we're underway in the season. A tough first game, but the Bruins need a big bounce back tonight. And this will unlock the Boston Bruins. There are a few keys to this game that Jim Montgomery has stated, that the team has stated, the team feels like they need a brand new game here tonight against the Montreal Canadiens. And with a few moves that they have made, there is a big potential in this. And we're going to go into our first topic here, our first little bit of news. And what the big one of today is that Jeremy Swayman is starting the first game of his new $66 million contract. This is going to be a big telltale of how this is going to go in this game. We're going to see if Jeremy Swayman starts off like he did in the playoffs last year, the way he finish the way he played the entire playoffs and last season if he can continue this and this is going to be a big part of this season we know that our star goaltender now being paid means that it's time to get to work and we need to see if this contract will be worth it and a lot of fans in my mind and brought me as well but I know I'm not going to try and stick with this are going to dictate this game off this contract and I know that's not the way that we should do it but this is going to be a really big game for Jeremy Swayman uh, himself as well. Kind of acknowledging that as well, that there's going to be a lot of reaction to this game depending on the result. And if this is not the ideal result for the Bruins, once again, as it was in the first game, there could be a bit of trouble on Jeremy Swayman's side of things. Uh, in a mindset standpoint of things. Now, Jeremy Swayman being in this lineup tonight also means that there are a few more changes, especially after how the Bruins played last game. There was no way that Jim Montgomery was going to keep this same lineup. So here are a few more moves that we have here from Scott McLaughlin. Montgomery confirmed that Tufty and Wallerspoon are in for Jones and Lowry. He said that's not a reflection of Jones and Lowry's games in particular since the whole team was poor on Tuesday, but he wants to get everyone in as uh, early in the season anyways. And, you know, this is definitely partially, I should say, a... Uh, a reflection on their game. Max Jones, not so much, but Mason Lowry had a very, very bad game, and that's no surprise to anybody. That's no surprise that Mason Lowry was not going to get in this game. Now, not saying that he won't be in in game three, because we know he certainly could be. Mason Lowry is going to develop a lot this year, and I think the Bruins, Bruins fans, and himself are all hoping for this, and we all kind of have the idea, especially last season, the way he kind of played near the end, that this is going to be a big season for his production for his development, and with a kind of new, more stronger defense, this is kind of the, the style that we want to see him play in. So this is a reflection on the game. I, I know Jim Montgomery didn't want to specifically say that because, you know, it's not a very uh, good thing to say to one of your rookie defensemen that you really yeah, you really believe in, but uh, this is going to be a big change as well. You know, we want to see everybody getting going quick. We're going to see everybody starting to kind of pick up the pace, especially against a Montreal team who is uh, a lot smaller, a lot younger, a lot quicker than what we're seeing from many other NHL teams. So this is going to be a very big point that we're going to have to pay attention to, that the Bruins are going to have to fix to and really determine if they're going to be able to keep up with some of these quicker teams around the NHL. And that's where this point steps in, that this is going to dictate how the Bruins play against a mixture of different teams. We've seen the offensive heavy team against the Leafs uh, so far in this uh this season with the Montreal Canadiens game. They put up, I believe, 47 shots on uh, Samuel Montembeau, who I believe could be in net again tonight. So the Bruins are going to have to do a lot of work to get in, get in the dirty areas, get in front of that, get some goals and pass Montembeau to take him off this high and uh, work from there. We've already played the Stanley Cup champion, Florida Panthers. We've seen how good their offense is and the Montreal Canadiens are not going to be as good as them, but they are a completely different team based on speed and young skill. So, this will be a very good second game to be able to tell what we're going to look at in the Boston Bruins this season. And hopefully we get the proper result here in this game. Now, let's head on to our second topic here, which is another thing that the Bruins need to make this happen to seriously unlock this team for the remainder of the season. And now I know this can't happen before tonight's game, but Tyler Johnson is still 
here. He has not gone anywhere just yet. He is still in uh, Boston, still there, not under contract, however. And this is what we have from Jim Montgomery discussing this this morning, uh, along with Poitras, uh, who stepped in, uh, making steps of recovery from injury. Today was the first day without a red sweater. And that meaning that we have an extra four slot still open along with that second line winger that we're still looking for. And this is what he had to say on this. Tyler Johnson is being patient and sticking around for now. And to me, the fact that Jim Montgomery is still uh, you know, being asked about Tyler Johnson, still saying that he's sticking around for a bit, to me, thinks that we're going to see a Danton Heine situation of last year. We're going to see Tyler Johnson in a Boston Bruins jersey in the regular season at some point in this season. And I'm very excited, and I hope it's as soon as possible, because this team needs a Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson still has that skill. I've mentioned in just about every video I've mentioned Tyler Johnson in. He's a bit of an older guy, but he brings that competitiveness, the skill, uh, and he does not play like his age. He plays like a lot younger guy. He plays like a guy who's been able to play with any possible teammate in the NHL. We've seen that from Tampa, going from the Stanley Cup team to the not-so-Stanley Cup team, all the way to the bottom of the league in Chicago. He's been able to put up some fantastic numbers everywhere, and I think that Tyler Johnson could be a perfect fit for the second line instead of Morgan Geeky. Now, I'm not saying Morgan Geeky is not a good player. You know, he's certainly a good one. But right now, I don't know if I want to see him consistently as our second line right winger. And I'm okay with kind of making some changes here and there, but Tyler Johnson needs to be inserted here somewhere into this lineup. And looking at what we have... Um, Sorry, wrong screenshot. Uh, looking at what we have from the offense here, I will pull this up on the bigger screen. Morgan Geeky on that second line right wing could certainly move down to a third, could move, uh, you know, could stay on second maybe even with Tyler Johnson down to the third, Tyler Johnson the second somewhere. I don't know. There's many options that they could do, especially once Poitras gets healthy. We have our offense sorted out. Now, to make this happen, the Bruins would need to make a move. They would need to kind of clear some cap, but... We wouldn't need to make a trade. All we'd have to do is send someone down to the AHL, kind of take that contract off that salary cap, and it would work out. You know, we have $145,000 in cap space right now. Tyler Johnson will not be making more than a million. I would probably say if I were to guess $875,000, uh, around that margin, and I think that is an amazing contract for Tyler Johnson, to be frankly honest. I think that he could be easily making upwards of two or three million and very surprised that he's not on a team already. So being able to have this, having Tyler Johnson here, and I think this lineup tonight, this game tonight, will dictate whether or not Tyler Johnson is going to be signed uh, probably by next uh, this upcoming uh, week, Monday. I would say that Tyler Johnson could be in the Bruins sweater before then. And I think that tonight is really going to be what the Bruins are looking for, what Jay Montgomery, what Don Sweeney are looking for to see if Tyler Johnson could really fill any gaps here in this offense. And right now, even before this game starts, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to win. I'm pretty confident on that. I'm feeling good about this game. I'm still going to say that we want the help from Tyler Johnson. So let me know what you think about this. Do you think that Tyler Johnson will have as big of an impact as many people are thinking on this Bruins team? And how do you think this game tonight will go against the Montreal Canadiens? But that's all I got in this video. If you did enjoy, give it a like, hit the sub button as well. I'm signing out. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.